It's time again for another installment of The Basics, and on today's show, in regards to the Star Trek CCG, I am responding to another question from a viewer who wants to know some tips and tricks on playing the three-player game. House rules, of course. So, let's get started. Now, past, present, and future, when I play a three-player game of the Star Trek CCG, I would play it normally as I would if it were a two-player game, using normal house rules, but with a few different exceptions, of which I will take you through. The first one, and this is the easiest, being with three players, we have always used a triangular-shaped space line. Now, I don't have enough room on this table right now to do the full triangular-based space line, so I'm showing you with three missions on each side of the triangle. Normally, that would be six or seven, or even more, depending on the house rules you're using. But for all intents and purposes, the triangular space line is the best way to go, and before anybody asks, if you are playing a deck that deals with the gamma or delta quadrants as separate, then I would put them off to an empty side of the table where no one is sitting. So I would put gamma here or delta here or whatnot. And of course connect them via wormholes or whatever else you're using. But this is the best way to do it. Trying to have one long space line with three players is just painful. I did experiment with that back in the day and it doesn't work. It makes the space line too long and don't do it. Just stick with the triangular space line. Trust me, it works. Item number two. So this is where we modify the house rules a bit more. And as I normally do with a two-player game, this is even more critical with a three-player game. You do not have a turn-based seed phase. Everybody seeds at the same time, whether it be dilemmas, outposts, doorways, artifacts, whatever. A normal seed phase with two players can take up to 25 minutes, sometimes more if someone's really dragging it out. By putting all of the seed cards down at the same time, it moves the game along quicker so you can get to the draw deck phase, also known as the play phase. Because, think about it, with three players you're going to be 35 to 40 minutes. Nobody wants to sit through a seed phase that's that long. This is one of the reasons why the Star Trek CCG suffered in the beginning when it first came out because the seed phase is sometimes ridiculous. It, it eats up a lot of time and a lot of players are raring to get right into gameplay and that's the advantage other CCGs had right off the bat over the Star Trek CCG is they got right into playing. You'd draw your starting hand and you'd get going. The seed phase was always moderately annoying. I still don't like it to this day in certain aspects, but it's a necessary part of the game. But that's why house rules are awesome. You can modify this and speed the game up a little. The final thing that I want to discuss in regards to when you're playing with three players is do not use tactic cards. Get rid of the Battle Bridge side deck if you happen to have one. Other side decks like the Q's Tent, they're fine because you're actually you're either downloading or you're or you're moving into your hand useful cards a battle bridge side deck or tactics are actually going to slow the game down significantly more than normal because of that extra player just use the normal battle schematic that we all knew uh, know and love and had no problem using until blaze of glory came out and slowed the game down even further just get rid of these cards out of the three player game for house rules Obviously, if you're using one of those side decks in a tournament, you're going to use it and you're going to play as per tournament. But for house rules, eliminate Battle Bridge and Tactic cards. Just stick with the Q's 10 side deck. Or if you want to speed the game up and have a little bit more fun, do not even use a side deck at all. If, if anything, if you want to use a sidebar, use the Zalconian storage capsule, store two or three cards there and use that. But, you know... Again, because of the number of players, you want to speed the game up a little bit. You don't want to drag everything out. So these are the three main things you could do to affect that and have an enjoyable three-player game. 
Now, that all being said, the pros and cons for a three-player game are as follows. Pros would be a much more fun, a much more diverse game that has a lot more going on, a lot more can happen. Uh, you really run into unknown circumstances with that extra player. The missions and the battle aspect alone with three players, it's amazing. It's a lot of fun. The cons, it takes a lot more time because you have that extra player, you have an extra turn going around the table. And depending on what's going on with the game at any given time, it could slow the game down dramatically at certain points. That's why I mentioned about getting rid of Battle Bridge and Tactic Cards and doing an Everybody Seed at Once thing during the seed phase. And one of the biggest cons of a three-player game is if you are playing certain cards like Raise the Stakes, it kind of muddles it up a bit because there's only going to be one winner and then all of a sudden there are two losers instead of one. So it opens up to the fact that, hey, why did the winner choose me to steal a card from my deck? Aside from all that, go for it. Play a three-player game, have a lot of fun. That's all for today, everybody.